Today, we're diving into some developments that could really fundamentally shift how we think about HIV treatment. Imagine a future where a functional cure isn't just, you know, a distant hope, but maybe a real scientific possibility. We're going to unpack some incredibly promising new breakthroughs. For this deep dive, our focus is squarely on these recent advancements in HIV treatment. Specifically, there's a new cell and gene therapy that's generated, well, a lot of buzz. Our sources today include a key press release from American Gene Technologies, ADT, and also related news that came out of the recent IAA's 2025 conference. So our mission is really to break down these findings, try to understand what they actually mean, and look at the future they might be pointing towards for people living with HIV. And this isn't just about the science, right? It's about global health and that uh, relentless search for solutions. Staying informed about things like this, well, it's critical for grasping where we're heading. So where should we kick this off? Well, what's really striking is the impact this news made at the uh, 13th International AIDS Society Conference on HIV Science, that's IAS 2025, held in Kigali, Rwanda. Hmm. American Gene Technologies, AGT, they presented their AGT 103T program as a late breaker. A late breaker. Yeah. And in the scientific community, that signals findings that are so fresh, so significant, they're kind of rushed out right at the conference. It really signals impactful data. That makes sense. Definitely cutting edge then. So AGT is the company. Tell us a bit more about them. Who exactly are they in this uh, specialized field? Right. AGT is a clinical stage biotechnology company. Their main focus is developing cell and gene therapies, specifically targeting infectious diseases. So that tells you they're operating right at the forefront of medical innovation, using these advanced biological techniques to tackle conditions like HIV, which, you know, have historically been so challenging with standard methods. Okay, a cell and gene therapy. That sounds incredibly advanced. So what is AGT-103T precisely? How does it actually uh, aim to work inside the body? Well, AGT-103T is really designed to go beyond just managing the virus. It's a specific cell and gene therapy that's engineered to um, protect and actually enhance HIV-specific immune cells. Think of it like, mm. like upgrading your body's own defense system, giving it better tools to not just fight HIV more effectively, but potentially tackle the virus's persistence in the body. Ah, I see. It's about changing the immune response for a more lasting, significant impact, not just suppressing the viral load day to day. That really is a different kind of approach. So what about the actual results, the clinical trial data that got people talking at IAS 2025? Was this real-world effect or still just promise in the lab? The human clinical data from AGT's Phase 1 trial is, well, is pretty compelling. They reported that all five evaluable patients, that's any five, a small group, but still all five, showed a significant reduction in an intact proviral HIV DNA after the treatment. Wow, five. Yes. And it wasn't just, you know, a tiny change. It was a consistent, measurable reduction across every single patient in this initial group. That kind of consistency, especially in early phase data, is highly encouraging. Intact proviral HIV DNA. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's quite technical. Can you break that down for us a bit? What makes that specific DNA so important when we talk about HIV? And how did AGT even measure it so accurately? That's a really critical question, and it's where the uh, the scientific cleverness comes in. So intact proviral HIV DNA, that refers to the complete viral DNA, the kind that can actually replicate, which has managed to integrate itself right into the host cell's own genes. This is the hidden part, the persistent virus that often remains, even when someone's on effective standard treatment, the antiretroviral. Right, the reservoir. Exactly. It forms what we call the viral reservoir, and that's the main reason a complete cure for HIV has been so difficult to achieve. These intact proviruses can just reactivate later and start making new virus. Now, what's really groundbreaking here is how AGT measured it. They used a novel, modified version of the intact proviral HIV DNA assay, the IPDA. This let them precisely measure only that hidden, stubborn HIV DNA, and importantly, separate it completely from the therapeutic vector, the treatment part they introduced. Ah. Okay, so they can be sure they were measuring the actual virus reduction. Precisely. Reporting sustained reductions in this intact HIV proviral DNA in all subjects, well, that's incredibly promising for the whole idea of a functional cure. And let's talk about that term, functional <laughs> cure. For people living with HIV, what could that actually mean, practically speaking, based on results like these? A functional cure in this context, it implies that the virus is suppressed down to such low, undetectable levels that it doesn't cause disease and, crucially, doesn't transmit to others, even if someone stops taking daily antiretroviral therapy. Wow. Without daily meds. That's the goal, yes. 
It means the person's own immune system, possibly boosted by treatments like AGT-103T, can keep the virus under control long term. Now, it might not mean eradicating every single last particle of the virus from the body, but it represents a huge improvement in quality of life and health. It's a shift from lifelong daily pills to a state where the virus is effectively managed by the body itself. Potential long-term remission, that's well, that's monumental for millions of people. It really does offer so much hope. And it sounds like this AGT breakthrough isn't happening in isolation. You mentioned IS 2025. It seems there was other exciting news coming out, too. It points to a maybe a broader momentum. Absolutely. The AGT news was significant, no doubt. But it's definitely part of a bigger picture, a larger wave of promising research highlighted around the same time at IS 2025. For instance, just a couple of days before AGT's announcement, on July 22nd, there was news about using broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNAPs, combined with an immune modulator. That showed potential to delay HIV rebound after stopping treatment. Okay, another approach. Exactly. And then go back a bit further to July 16th, another really interesting development, engineered T cells that might be able to kill off those reservoir cells we talked about, sort of mimicking a vaccine effect researchers have been chasing for a long time. So you see, these are different strategies, but they're all pushing towards similar, really critical goals in HIV treatment and cure research. So it's not just one single path forward, but multiple different strategies, all seemingly making progress around the same time. What does that bigger picture tell us about where HIV science is right now? I think it tells us that HIV science is incredibly resilient and, frankly, innovative, even when facing challenges. The IAS 2025 preview materials actually highlighted that this progress is happening, and I quote, amidst a worldwide funding emergency. Hmm. Funding emergency. That's dark. It is. And it really underscores the dedication here. Despite global financial pressures, scientists are managing to push forward with truly groundbreaking work. The fact that we're seeing advances on multiple fronts, cell and gene therapy, antibodies, engineered T cells, it's critical. It means we have multiple shots on goal, you know? Right. So why is that so important for us, for the listeners, to understand that there are these multiple research avenues? What's the key takeaway there? Well, because each one represents a different way to tackle this really complex problem of HIV. If one approach hits a snag, maybe another one breaks through. It just dramatically increases the chances of finding solutions that are truly effective and, importantly, scalable globally. Every breakthrough, whether it's towards a functional cure like AGT's work or delaying rebound or clearing the reservoir, it offers hope from a different angle. It builds toward a more comprehensive response overall. It's not about waiting for one magic bullet. It's about building this powerful multi-pronged toolkit against the virus. That makes a lot of sense. And moving beyond the, you know, the intense lab work and the clinical trials, our sources also seem to touch on the crucial human side, the community aspects of HIV. Mm -hmm. It's clearly a story that goes way beyond just the science itself, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. And that's something that can get lost sometimes. Even if we achieve a perfect functional cure scientifically, the fight against HIV isn't just in the test tube or the clinic. It's profoundly shaped by human connection, by community, and by that ongoing battle against stigma. As the sources point out, if we don't address the mental health impacts, the wellness issues tied to how society perceives HIV, even the best science can't fully deliver on its promise of genuine well-being. That emphasis on a stigma-free approach isn't just, you know, a nice to have. It's absolutely vital for people living with and affected by HIV. And we saw specific initiatives mentioned like join change community health and HIV advocates navigating global emergencies. That yeah. sounds like a really concrete example of people mobilizing. It really is. Join Change is a great example of that proactive community role. It brings together people living with HIV, advocates, health professionals, all working together to navigate health crises, especially in global emergency contexts. It highlights how interconnected these health challenges are and why collective action is so necessary. These kinds of grassroots efforts, advocacy groups, they're just as vital as the scientific breakthroughs. It reminds us this is a holistic challenge. So if someone's listening to this and feeling, you know, motivated or wanting to connect more, how can they actually engage with this cause? Uh -huh. Based on the source material, it sounds like there are tangible ways beyond just reading headlines. Yeah, the source material definitely points to several pathways. You can become a member of relevant organizations, you can support their work financially or through volunteering, or simply make a commitment to stay informed using reliable sources. For instance, 
Resources like the EATG newsletter or the HIV and co-infections bulletin were specifically mentioned. They offer hand-picked news from the field, basically a curated stream of information. It's about building that knowledgeable, supportive community around both the science and the people directly impacted. And it really brings it full circle for us as listeners, doesn't it? Understanding these ways to engage, whether it's a direct support, advocacy, or just staying educated, helps us grasp the full picture. It's this comprehensive effort that involves, yes, groundbreaking science, but also that deep community support, empathy, and a real commitment to overall well-being. Okay, so as we start to wrap up this deep dive, let's just pull together the core insights. We've seen some truly exciting progress towards a functional HIV cure with AGT-103T, the cell and gene therapy showing sustained reductions in that key intact proviral DNA in early trials. We've also looked at the wider research landscape from IAS 2025, showing multiple scientific strategies moving forward, which is really encouraging, especially given those funding challenges. And crucially, we've touched on the essential role of community advocacy in tackling stigma. Addressing HIV requires more than just medical treatment. It involves mental health, well-being, and societal change. Absolutely. And if we kind of connect all these threads, it leads to a final thought, maybe something for you, the listener, to really consider. Given these latest scientific advances we discussed, and coupled with the ongoing powerful efforts in advocacy and community building, what new possibilities do you envision for the global response to HIV, say, over the next decade? What role might future breakthroughs play, not just medically, but in truly transforming how society perceives and supports people living with HIV all around the world? The journey is definitely far from over, but perhaps the path forward looks a little brighter, a little more hopeful than ever before. 